quick sidebar. We moved into a new apartment. We're trying to figure out the sound situation. So if you're hearing like car rumblage, just all that kind of stuff, sorry in advance. We're like, we're working on it actively. So bear with us as we figure out acoustics of the new apartment. <laughs> it's been like very annoying. Hey everyone, I'm Halise, a digital storyteller and video producer. And I'm Mr. Halise, and I, I'm not working as a nurse. And this is a Stumblewell podcast, a couple that you know, talking about married life and things like such as... Roll the music, Chris. (laughs) (laughs) You just out here using your government? This is good. Use it. Use your government. All right. So it's been a minute since we did a podcast. Sorry, y'all. It's just, as you can see, a lot has happened, which is hilarious because this will probably go up before other things and it'll still be things that are shot in the old apartment. Oh, okay. Yeah. The channel's going to be looking a little weird for a minute. Just bear with me. Just to further date the episode and throw time in flux. Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Liberation Day from. The colonizers. Yes. Happy Juneteenth, everyone. Begrudgingly. Yes. This this will be a belated Juneteenth by the time this episode goes live, but we are recording on Juneteenth, so. It's a national holiday. Yeah. I feel pretty good about it. Take that, Republicans. Even though they signed it. They, it was bipartisan, for sure. I still believe that if you are really wanting to empower and truly celebrate mm-hmm. people of color and or, you know, black people especially, uh-huh. you'd make election day a national holiday. Sure. Dude, facts. We're on the same page. Give nobody a reason not to vote. Yeah. Or just make make it possible for everyone to accessibly vote. Anyway, anyway. today's podcast episode, <laughs> we've got big news as the name of the episode probably entails. Yeah. I'm going to let you, t- this yo, this is you, so. You finally browbeat me. Well, you, you finally just beat the sense into me. Just a quick overview yeah if you're new here end of 2020 welcome quit yeah from that job took a month off really enjoyed it started writing some stuff yeah really liked spending the time with you engaging in that creative process started that other job other job was not all it was cracked out to be pay was weird benefits were weird job responsibilities were non-existent yeah i was languishing in the role languishing nope going languish languish Fun word. So there was time between that job and the other job. It was a hospital job. Still enjoying the writing process, enjoying all that good stuff. Got back into the hospital, swing of things. And again, there's something wrong. Like it just doesn't feel right. On that floor of the hospital, which will not be named, it was a huge cluster. Like, yeah. Couldn't keep nurses on board. Ton of travelers. Traveling nurses. Sorry, traveling nurses or nurses on contract. The hospital actually had its own internal like rotating team. Yeah. And if a unit was understaffed, then, you know, they would force people there. Learned that the travelers or the um, float team did not like working there because it was a cluster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finished my last day of orientation. Everything went, went wrong. And there was nothing that the, the unit can do. It's just it's just the way things were. And I recognize that. Also recognized, finally, any job that I was going to get in nursing, it's like, it's, it's going to be the same thing. Just to, like, put a, a pin in it. Like, a double check with you. Yeah. We have enough money. You said we have enough money maybe till six months. And we'll see if anything else comes up on the radar. Yeah. We're looking good for right now. Yeah. And I'm on board with Team Stumblewell. Yeah. In so few words, Mr. Halise quit his job as a nurse. But yeah, you, I mean, you kept talking about you would switch jobs because you're trying to, you were trying to like fill the sort of like worldly vibe, like requirements of like, well, it's upward mobility because I'm making more money and the benefits are this or whatever the thing was. Well, those were the big two was... What's it paying? And then what are the benefits? Right. And I was like, but do you like it though? (laughs) And I think there came a moment where you finally acknowledged, and this was maybe a year or two ago, where you finally acknowledged like, I never really wanted to be a nurse. Oh, it wasn't a year or two ago. It was a while back. But just saying. Is that the start of my nursing career? (laughs) Well, you just like began to verbalize that more. Right. I never actually wanted to be a nurse. Becoming a nurse was an answer to the time period that we found ourselves in. And also just like... Great Recession. 
Great Recession, and then, well, the second recession. Was ours the Great? I think the Great one was... 2008 was a Great Recession. Oh, right. We were, the other one was the Great Depression. We were in the Great Recession. <laughs> Remember the other recession that we took part of right. a decade ago? Yeah, so all of that was happening, and you just didn't seem happy. And I think... I wasn't. The thing that was great about nursing, it did give you a career. Like, it gave you, not even really the career part, because obviously you're moving away from it now, but I, oh. I am grateful for nursing because it at least, it gave you and me by osmosis being married to you, like just like reliable income. And it gave, it gave you a vocational skill that you can always fall back on. Like I have nothing to fall back on y'all. I don't know if y'all realize this about me. I have always been in film. I have always done video. There, I, I have nothing that I can like fall back on except for like clerical, you know what I mean? Work. I, I disagree. I, I would have to learn to be a barista. Like I would have to learn no, something new. You're in a position now where you can, t like everybody wants to do a version of this. Everybody wants to do video or everybody want, like has something to say. They want to figure out how to best put it out there. Mm -hmm. who best to do it than someone who's been doing it for years and is well-spoken, knows what they're talking about, has years of experience. Like, you are the perfect coach. You are Aww. the perfect producer of people. Aw. Aw. Think about it. Aw. Tiffany, if you ever listen to this, aw. <laughs> it's gotta be higher. Aw. But yeah, you could just fall back into that. Yeah, that's true. I suppose you're right. Point of the story, we had been doing a lot of conversations chit chats if you will and yeah i think there was a moment where you were like i think i'm gonna quit and i said okay and it still took me do it <laughs> 72 well so like i was very much on board i had to go out and prompt like okay so i'm off orientation i need to put in my schedule right oh yeah 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 just get just shoot it to me okay sent them the email nothing and by then i was already thinking it's a sign yeah what if i just what Never send the schedule. <laughs> yeah. No, to just what if I'm just not on the schedule? Yeah. And then I resign. Yeah. Finally, after a week. They finally called you. They finally <laughs> called me and said, hey, sorry, could call us back so we can get you on the schedule. The days that I had already wanted to work had already passed. Yeah. Like, well, we could still get you on the schedule so you can get your hours this week. I was like, nah. That's I'm crazy. Done. It was fascinating. It was a va fascinating turn of events financially how this happened, I guess. Well, I was just going to say, I appreciate nursing as well. I complain about things and I complain about a lot of the jobs that I had. And a lot of those were organizational issues. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them are just what nurses have to go through. But this is by no means um, like a podium to slander the profession. Of course like, not. The people that can go out there and do it, the people that have the compassion for people, the people that are empathetic, those people make good nurses, they make strong nurses. Yeah. But they put up with a lot of abuse. A Just lot. like everybody. I mean, every, almost every job, right? Sure, but, but I, yeah, I don't know. I feel like nurses get it just, they're literally wiping your butt. You know what I mean? There's a different level of humility and like service that you have to have to do it, I think, and do it with a smile. Cause you're just seeing people at their worst. Like you really are. I mean, you know? And you had a lot of nurses step away from the profession in 2020 yeah. at the height of the pandemic. They didn't mm -hmm. want to put themselves or their families at risk with limited PPE. Right. Um, yeah. And there was a lot of criticism being lobbed at them. You really? Know, like good, ri yeah, yeah, good riddance or you know what you signed up for. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And I think it was one of the nurse nursing organizations for a state said, yeah, I applaud these people for knowing that they can no longer be committed in that capacity. And for stepping away, for having the wherewithal to know within themselves. Like, I am not a good fit for this anymore, or I yeah, could potentially... I need to put a pause on this. Yeah. I don't think there's... There's nothing wrong with stepping away from a profession, especially nursing. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I put myself in the job. Day after day, I was committed. Patients were, you yeah, know, your patients singing my liked praises. You. Yeah. yeah. They were I mean, very vocal about it, too, which was cool. I was caring, and I cared for my patients. Like, I, I don't do things half-assed. Right. Ooh, you should talk about that. The whole you quitting thing, the higher ups being like, we are getting so many good things, hearing so many good things from you. How can you? Right. Oh yeah. What did they say? I can't remember even how they said how it, but I was just like, what? I don't, un I don't understand. <laughs> you like, like I've heard nothing but good things from your patients. Cause they round on all the patients at that hospital. Right. We've heard nothing but good things and you do such a good job. Cause he told them that he was quitting to, you told him you were quitting to write, right? Did you tell him that? I told my director that I was, it wasn't where my it wasn't my passion. Yeah, it wasn't there what we I go. wanted to do. That was what it was. It wasn't your passion. That's what you told them. Well, because I was trying to resign quickly to the charge nurses. Yeah. 
And then they, they said, no, talk to the director. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, come on. Just let me resign. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was like a long 30, 40 minute ordeal talking to her about it, understandably. But right. Yeah. It's like, I don't understand. We heard nothing but good things from your from your patients. You do such a good job. You're always working. How can this not be your passion? And I told her in the moment, yeah, but imagine what good I could do. Imagine the things I could do mm-hmm. in a position where I am passionate about. I do right. care about what I'm doing. Yeah. And that was wasted on her at the moment. But Well, obviously, I mean, the stress of, yeah. Like, it would be one thing if I was a bad nurse. Sure. And leaving the profession is like, okay, good. I mean, you needed to have left. Yeah. Then, yeah, you always know if you weren't a, like, if you weren't at least outwardly a good fit for a job because you're like, I think I'm going to leave. And people are like, okay. They just kind of let you leave. (laughs) It's one thing when you're like trying to leave and then they're like, maybe don't, you know, like, no, we don't want to lose you. You're actually really good, you know, which I've been in those situations too. So it's just like, sorry, yeah, yeah, awkward. Beep, 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 beep. Hey everyone, it's been a while. Welcome back to the Stumblewell Podcast. A few quick announcements that we always do in every episode. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're watching us on YouTube or like us. Yes, wherever. Like comment. Yeah, or comment as well. That helps if you're watching us on YouTube. Or if you're listening to us on any podcast platform, please rate us there. So that way it helps us to get discovered and other such things. Actually, so real quick aside for that. Oh. The biggest thing that matters because they're the predominant player in it. Uh huh. If you like the podcast, even if you listen to it on something Spotify else. or something else, go to Apple Podcasts oh, okay. and rank us. Rank, rate us there. Rate us there. Got It'll it. It'll help us out. It'll help us get found. Yeah. Okay. Well, do that, please, <laughs> if you're listening to us. The other thing you can do if you want to take it a step further, no pressure, but if you want to, consider joining the Patreon, patreon.com slash Halise. There you get early access to these podcasts and any videos that are going live on the channel, uh, as well as private weekly vlogs from me. It's a good time. Joining the Patreon is really, really helpful because this is how we're able to up the production value, not only of the channel in general, but of the podcast itself. We have new microphones, as you can see. Again, StumbleWell, the production company, is always trying to up the production value of things, something that I want to do next in general, the video side of podcasting in general. I want multi-camera setups. You know what I'm saying? Like I want close up of me, close up of Mr. Hollies, oh, and then no. like the the wide. This so one. much more editing. No, it's easy. You just time it out. Anyway, I want to do that, but like more cameras are needed to do that. I currently only have two. Joining the Patreon breeds dividends in regards to production value as well. Anyway, back to the podcast. Bye. But yeah, which what's interesting about this was I think the timing because. By the time he had quit, I hadn't gotten the residency yet. I was, I wasn't even, I hadn't even applied yet. Had you not applied yet? Nah, I, had, I just realized that I hadn't even applied yet. April? And so, really? Yeah, I came in right at towards the edge of it because I uh, missed that the applications had opened, you know. Mm. And then it was like right towards the end. I was like, oh crap, applications, <laughs> and like applied real quick. Celebration for Adobe Resident Halise. Okay, yeah. I know you've- Probably posted it on your yeah, the, channel by now. The, yeah, the video already came out. It's a big out. deal. It's it great. is a big deal, but that's not what we're talking well about today. Well deserved. Well deserved. It's not what we're talking about today. So I hadn't applied for the Adobe residency yet, but you and I had been talking already and you were talking about leaving and wanting to leave and all that stuff. And so I had already crunched the numbers with the company. The company can't afford for you to not work for a whole year. And by not work, I just mean for you to actually get to approach, like for you to not bring in income for a whole year. But what we can do is we can cover another sabbatical. So as y'all may or may not know, at the beginning of 2020, I came into 2020 uh, with the company. I had saved up around $20,000 with the company's savings. So that way I could take an academic sabbatical and I could try to grow the channel for 2020. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this was before the pandemic happened as well. So it ended up working out anyway because I already had wanted to transition the company into more creative work rather than traditional production work. And so by this point, we had recovered. We'd gotten some pretty good stuff happening at the end of 2020 as well, and that we were already starting to see things come in again for the beginning of 2021. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I can say without a doubt, because that's the nature of entrepreneurship, like you just don't know how good or bad things will be (laughs) in like six months. For sure, we can cover 
you having an academic sabbatical as well for six months. And maybe by then the company has got another contract of some kind or something like that. And then it can keep extending, which is basically what happened to me in 2020. I just like kept extending it, the right. landing strip. And so I was like, I'm willing to, gam you know, not gamble, but I'm willing to give you the opportunity to have six months to just try something else, like it's anything gamble. else. Something catastrophic could have happened, but, you know, that aside. Yeah, I suppose. I remember I just kept saying, when you feel comfortable quitting, then go for it. Because the company has, we can handle it for six months. Beyond that, I don't know. But we can handle it for six months. And <laughs> it still took me like 72 hours to acknowledge the fact that I would not be working and you would be working. Yeah. You have to acknowledge the elephant in the room where this is definitely a position of privilege. Oh, yes. Being able to of walk course. away and then not just rely on you, but also to be able to help you. Yes. It's a very unique position. And I'm, I, I've thanked you many times. Yeah. But I'm still very grateful and appreciative of the way my days look now. It is nice, man. I love you. I, I, I really appreciate you for that. Aww. I mean, it's it's been cool. One thing I will say, though, is that it's been cool to actually see you really have a lot of, like, internal personal drive rather than having it be like external I have to answer so to somebody and that's why I'm getting up today mm -hmm. so it's like I think like I know for example our families are still just like what are they doing <laughs> you know like, yeah I think that's a different segue <laughs> that's a different segue. unless you want to talk about it now we'll get to that but like I <laughs> which is fine but um here's a little preview here's a little taste they don't believe it <laughs> They're not super jazzed about it. Well, different generations, so I totally get it. But it's been interesting and really cool to see you have the internal motivation and then also have to work through a lot of the like artistic struggles of when you are trying to build yourself up in your own way. Because it is like, if you don't get up and do the thing, you don't get paid, you know, or you don't push yourself forward to get something going. And so it's been really cool to see you still get up at 6.30, still go, you know, and yeah, you're doing some things more now that are like very self-care focused to like get yourself going for the day, right. picked up running again, all that kind of stuff. But you don't realize how much all of that stuff like really helps you to have a creative drive. And it's been really cool to also watch you figure out when you write best, how you write best, try to create that environment for yourself. I appreciate that when, like you're like me, how I get very frustrated if it was mostly an admin day and I really didn't actually get to push something out or create something. You know, you end up feeling upset with yourself because you're like, I didn't do enough, which is good because that's how you keep growing and moving forward. So it's been cool to see someone else go through that art transition of like, being a working artist, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of growth and pain in the jobs that I had, right? I mean, growing pains. Yeah. And just tension and aggravation and, and whatever. I mean, just day-to-day -day stuff that most people deal with at a job. But I didn't fully understand your plight. I didn't fully understand your um, struggles. Mm. And then now, working through, you know, stuff on a very small scale, I, I realize everything that you had to go through and how much more impressive it is. It was impressive at the time, but still like you built this platform for yourself and you're still doing X, Y, and Z. It's amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I think the big thing is like, yeah, learning as a working artist, learning how to figure out your time management and then learning when to like, turn off the, which which side of the brain is the creative one and which side is the lo logical one? I don't know. I can yeah. look it up. Left brain, want. right brain, you know, learn, turn, learning when you need to turn off the left and focus on the right or turn off the right, focus on the left or when to kind of have them both running simultaneously as well. It's a, it's a lot and there's, it's, it takes a learning curve for uh, sure. Yeah. It's been really, it's been really fascinating y'all. It's been a fascinating experience. Yeah. And I mean, I'm still working through my writing because I, I didn't really do it out of college. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I've never done, I told you before, I've never done short fiction. I've never yeah. done narrative fiction. Yeah. I've never done story building. Um, so I'm s starting from scratch, like building the scaffolding, building the foundation, building the scaffolding. It's like, oh, I built a wall today. It didn't look good. I looked at it after a week, didn't like it. <laughs> tore it down redid the wall yeah i mean it all takes time that's the big thing i know for me the thing i've been telling you over and over again because you 
tend, I've noticed like you, every couple of weeks, you'll fall back into this thing of like, I'm not bringing in any income. Uh, you know, I'm freaking out. Yeah. And I'm like, but that's not the point of what you're doing right now. The point of what you're doing right now isn't to make money. The point of what you're doing is to work at your art and get better at it. That's the point. <laughs> at and least I, for the next, you know, for the rest of the year, you know? Yeah. And again, that's another position of privilege. And I think I am, I am doing that. I think my writing is improving. My editing is improving. Yeah. Grammar's <laughs> still leaning real hard in, into Grammarly, but. <laughs> well, it's been interesting because, yeah, I felt like that first month when you were in between jobs and you wrote a story, for me, it was really cool to see like, oh man, when he actually has the time and the energy and all that kind of stuff, he can take an idea and mold it into something. And I was so impressed then, but like even now in the two months ish that you've like officially left and have been working through your schedule and figuring yourself out and like writing stories, writing a lot of stories, like the the time frame from you getting a first draft to a pretty comprehensible, strong draft, like has shortened significantly. So you've it's been really cool to see how fast you've grown in like your progression of getting things to a good place. To a good enough place. Sorry, good enough place. I'm I know still, you're still, yeah, you're still building, you're still working on it. Yeah, all, all that, that stuff. stuff. But I'm just saying, I can see within the time period, I can see the growth in your writing already, which is really cool. Because that's the point of the sabbatical, is for you to grow in your writing, you know? So it's like, you're doing it. Great, you know? Well, the first goal was to write a short story a month. Yeah, and you were doing that. This was before you had officially left. You were the first story this year, I wrote in like two days. Yeah. And then, so I was working on stuff and it was taking a while. Um, and then it was a, maybe a story a week. And now yeah. it's a story in a day. I've gotten a couple in a day, but I mean, they need to be edited over and over and over again. Well, right. So getting something on the page is yeah. not the challenge. It's making sure that it's legible and enjoyable is the hard part. I mean, what do they say? Writing is rewriting. So and there writing you go. And rewriting and writing and rewriting. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, it's, yeah, that's where we're at, y'all. That's what's happening in the background. That's why the podcast has been a little bit on pause, um, because he left his job. Then I got the residency. It was like, oh, snap. Then we, And we moved new microphones that we're working through here for the other podcast I'm trying to launch. So, yeah, there's just a lot going on. Welcome to the mess. <laughs> And I'm going to be... Welcome to the mess. Welcome to the mess. <laughs> and I'm going to be editing? Trying to edit. Yeah, he's going to start trying to edit the podcast as well. Welcome to the mess. <laughs> it's also been interesting because... Uh, so, you know, he quit his job to focus on writing and is taking a bit of a sabbatical to focus on the writing. But he's also actually been helping with StumbleWell a lot. And... Got to talk about the parents. Oh, right. Yes. But, yeah. Yeah, he's been helping out with running the company a lot, which has been really cool. Um, because if you are on the Patreon, you know that was like a goal, was to hire him on full time. But originally I was like, we can't afford you, homie. You expensive, bruh. <laughs> um, but I didn't have to be paid that. Yeah, I just, but like the way your mind right. worked at the time. Right. Yes, you did need to be paid that. <laughs> So it took you a while to figure out that it's just like, oh, right. It's not that I'm getting paid. It's that every living is covered right. and I can exist now. <laughs> and not, I think that's a hard thing for if you're in like a capitalist culture and society and like you've had to do the traditional things for so long, it can be hard to shift that mindset away from that. So, Well, it's just the question becomes, what am I worth? And if I'm not bringing anything in, Ugh. which is already like, oh man, if you can, yeah, I don't know how I feel about, which is, this is like why uh, being an artist is stressful when you're having to like quote something out, you know, and be like, well, how much does this cost? And it's basically them in so few words saying, what are you worth? Right. Mm, that's too high. I don't, I don't, I don't value yeah, you that much. Mm, I don't value what you do that much actually. So... We just don't think you're worth, like in so few words, when clients say they're like, we just don't think you're worth that. And it's like, mm, okay. And then especially, <laughs> do you know anybody else? Yeah, do you know anyone else who maybe could? <laughs> no, that would work for oh, cheap? Oh, so yeah, so do you, do you know anyone else that I can, 
that like has the struggle of not knowing their worth yet that I can forward to you? Sure. They're still <laughs> in college. About. Reach out to college kids. Right. Anyway, so all that's been going on or that goes on and that makes you feel a certain type of way as well. But Mr. Halise has been helping with Stumblewell, point of the story. He is our operations and production manager now. Answering emails. Answering emails, which is awesome possum. Shooting. And he's also our, yes, he's our like borderline main shooter at this point. But um, Depending on the project. Yeah. Depending on the project, he's the main shooter. And then trying to be assistant editor. Yeah, and now he's trying to get into assistant editing as well. But yeah, it's been really cool. You've already saved, he's already saved me. Oh, man. Actually, yeah, so, oh, okay, so hold on. Before we, we get into the finances of it. Okay. To the parents oh, and their reactions. Okay, yeah. Um, both my parents. He just wasn't going to tell nobody, which is hard. I'm not good at that. Oh, I still don't even know. <laughs> I'm not good at not telling people things. I was not comfortable and still don't Hence feel comfortable. Hence the YouTube channel still and don't the feel podcast. <laughs> still don't feel comfortable telling people, like, what I do. Yeah. Because people don't, I mean... It's like, oh, I'm a writer. It's like, oh, okay. Are you like a successful writer? Meaning are you mm. published and then in a whole bunch of stuff or getting paid for things? Yeah. Or are you one of those starving writers yeah. or wannabes that mm. I just ugh. working on that screenplay? For or them. adding aspiring to things. You're not aspiring. If you're doing it, then you it. Right. So. Anyway. <laughs> I, yeah, I just wasn't going to bring it because it didn't matter. Like, we know that the finances are covered. Right. It doesn't matter if I'm working at the hospital or not. I am still Chris. Yeah. I'm just less grumpy. I'm less miserable. Yeah. So if anything, there's it's a marked improvement for you. It is. It has been a very marked improvement. You are so much happier overall. But your mom is a nurse and didn't... It's like, wait, make sure that he... Make sure he keeps his... his what the heck is it? His your, license. Your license renewed. Yeah, I mean... So and I had just renewed it. Yeah. Like I literally stuck to my old job long enough to get the educational requirements yeah. necessary to renew, paid for the renewal, got the confirmation, and then quit. <laughs> like I'm, I know how to do this. Yeah. And everyone's concerned that I'm going to lose it. And it's like, I'm not going to lose it. I just I th- renewed it. I think with my, for my parents, their big thing is just like, and this was something that I was talking to you about as well. I was like, oh, you know, I, I think this is, one of those things where generationally they just aren't necessarily going to jive with it and understand it because what I didn't even, Oh man, I said it so well when we were having conversations about this, like they literally kind of can't comprehend the idea of leaving a paying job to like pursue something like this because they've never had the opportunity to think that like far ahead. It's always like with my parents, with your parents as well, it's always been about, needing to work a certain amount or work a certain way. Like my parents have always had like two or three jobs at a time. It wasn't until I was like maybe in high school that they both only had one job. And even then the jobs that they had were very high hour jobs and being on the road a lot and like all that kind of stuff. And so I don't know. I think there's going to always be a disconnect because it's like they've done the sacrificing so that way we can have more opportunities and yep. now we're taking those opportunities, you know, taking those calculated risks. And they're just like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> no, actually, yeah, I think I think both of our parents are risk averse because yes. it wasn't a luxury that they could, you know, participate in. Yeah, because it's like if even a calculated risk for them when they were coming up and figuring themselves out is like a really high calculated risk. Like there just wasn't the opportunity to do not even epically risky things, just like semi risky things. My mom and dad also went through a lot of hardships, like in the beginning with finances as well. So I think losing jobs and stuff like that. Um, And so I know from my mom specifically, that's why she kept pushing. Like your parents are always going to want you to do the safe thing because at least my parents, they know how bad it can get, you know, like, yeah, they, they just want to make sure that you can eat and you're not homeless. Yeah, but totally. But we were doing the right things and, and we were still, still homeless. Happened. Yeah. We were eating. <laughs> eating was not a problem, but we were still homeless. Yeah, so, you know, it's, I, like, I, it was interesting when I, um, Chris told his parents and then I told my mom and dad, I told my mom and I was like, I know she's going to tell my dad, so it'll be fine. But, you know, she called back later just like, you know, I know you're an adult. I know you're an adult. 
and like y'all are living your own lives and all of that. I just, you know, and she like made her, she said her piece and stuff to me and I appreciated it. I mean, you want parents or you just, I see my parents as mentors in life at this point. And so I appreciated that she came to me as me as an adult, like her adult child and was like, here are my concerns with this decision that you right. have Instead made. Instead of telling you, yeah, you should do this, you're making a mistake. Yeah. She was very much like, here is what I don't agree with about this adult decision you are making, but you're an adult. And I just, she was, you know, as your mom, I'm going to say my piece and like, here's what I'm scared of for you for that. And I was like, I mean, thank you. I want you to tell me things. So <laughs> thank you for telling me, you know. Most of their concerns, almost all their concerns, all of their concerns <laughs> involved money. Yes. And why don't you just go back? And especially with, I mean, previous episodes, student loan debt. Yes, which we're still, still paying, by away. the way. Yeah, we're still paying it. Um, but I mean, it's still substantial. Yeah. It's like, why don't you just go and work or work part-time or yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, sure. So I, I literally did five minutes worth of like basic math. Oh, yeah. We had figured out the financial it's thing. Like, okay, so I'm going to get paid this much per hour, even if I work full time, which is 36 hours a week, for the rest of the year, it's only this. But what am, what have I already helped you with? Yeah. So how much would it cost you to have a shooter or a production assistant or an assistant editor yes. for all the projects that I have already worked on? Yes. Like up until the point where I had already quit. Yeah. Or shortly after I quit. And then for the remainder of the year, prospectively. Yeah. And it was, if not the same amount. It was a little bit more. Like you, was it a little bit more? It was a little it was, bit more. It was just like close. I just remember that. Um, it was a little bit more because at this point for 2021, I had already gotten some, um, if you're on the Patreon, then you know, but I had already gotten some pretty decent um like traditional production work, like post pan well not we're not post pandemic, so don't say that. But uh, people are starting companies, entities, agencies are starting to like figure out what it is to be in this sort of like new balancing normal. And so they have their marketing budgets and they're ready to use them now yep. and they know how to film socially distanced and like all that kind of stuff. So production was actually picking back up for Stumblewell towards the end of twenty twenty. And yeah, you were already helping me film a lot. Whenever you, and this is when you were already back at the bedside, but like you were trying to, he was trying to adjust his schedule to like help me film because every, you know, like hiring a shooter to come with me or hiring a PA to come with me on set, um, it gets expensive, man. Especially if you're still, I would say the company is still quite young. It's only been around since 2018. So, you know, every, you're like pinching pennies a little bit. <laughs> well, and that's, that's not the only cost. The other cost is time. Yes. trying to schedule and yes. then the stress to you. Right, yeah. So even if you can find somebody, are they available for the same time right. that you need them? Exactly. And then how much is it actually going to be? And then all the stress of trying to book them, find yeah. somebody, all the people that you know that you know are good right. aren't available. You, right. Yeah. So like, I, I think it was a little bit short, like how much I would have made at the hospital mm. or like as a nurse versus how much I was saving you then. Yeah. It was a little bit short, but then I, I, I asked you like, Hey, so that much difference, is it worth having right. the stress? And, and the answer like, was no, no, <laughs> it's not because I was supposed to help you with another shoot. Yeah. In a seven day span, I had worked six of those days and that was day six. Yeah. And you were already done too. Yeah. It was like 12 hour days. But, but that was the thing. Like even when like your mom said, why don't you just do part time? It's like, no, because I'm still going to, I don't know what dates you're going to need me to be available. Yeah. And I might not always be able to get it off. And that's just the nature of what I do yeah. as well with StumbleWell. You just kind of don't know. Because so it depends on the client. It depends on the client. And then they're trying to book things on their end and just, you know, so if I'm back and forth. In for a penny, in for a pound. Right. Right. Yeah. So if I'm part time and then I'm still not fully available to help with the company, then there's no point to me doing any one thing, either helping you with the company or being at the bedside. Right. So I just need to be all in. Yeah. And that was what I meant by the whole, like, it's a calculated risk thing. Um, and then, yeah, of course, by the, yeah, by the time you had left and stuff, then I got the residency and I was like, oh, well, okay. 
now the six months has become eight months. <laughs> you know, like now it stretches us out a little bit longer. So cool. And once again, since you've been off from uh, or since you've left the bedside, you've already helped me on things that will hopefully be coming to the channel soon. So, yeah, it's been really cool. It's not like we made the decision lightly. It's not right. Like, no, nah, we've been talking about this for. I'm miserable and I just want to do time. blah. Right. We're calculating people. Very calculating people. Weigh the pros and cons. Lots of maths. All the maths mm, were done. Not like, like trig, not like calculus. But maths. Yes. Maths. That's how the folks in the UK say it. It's like maths. Oh, maths. Multiple math. <laughs> what did you do on, in your maths exams? Maths. Like, anyway. Writing is fun. Writing is fun. It's hard. And hard. Being, a, being an artist is hard. You got to figure stuff out. So something else that Mr. Halis is considering doing, because right now, again, his sabbatical right now is about working on writing only and improving his writing. And you're also considering it, try, you're, you're starting to submit to publishers as well. I've, I've submitted to publishers, yeah. Yeah. I, being from the internet and other such things, uh, was like, you should just start a Patreon then. So that way, if people are interested to read your work, but because the whole idea with submitting things to publishers is you can't share them openly anymore. Right? That's like the general thing that's been happening. Is yeah, that I mean, like, yeah, they want some exclusivity. A version, yeah, they, they want, want a version of exclusivity. It's the same thing like if you're going to submit things to a film festival, they want to know like, has this been screened publicly anywhere or whatever? Well, they're just trying to drive traffic to yeah. their sites and generate revenue for them. Yeah, which totally makes sense. Yeah. So I was like, well, then you should just start a Patreon. So that way, if people want to read your stuff before it gets officially published, they can. There's a paywall, and that's how you get to still share. Because I know the big thing for you right now is you're trying to get feedback on your stories. Yeah, I mean, even, even saying this now... Like, it's still technically self-publishing if it goes on a website. Really? Even Patreon? Um, like, it's just a, t a post on Patreon? I don't know. It's it's Call it, like, a secret blog. No, it's, especially if you call it a blog, then it's oh. it's been published. Really? Yeah. But, oh, dang. Any, any self-publishing, if it's been posted anywhere. <sighs> Here's the thing. So All like, right. My, my I don't grand, know the world of publish of word written things. Well, I know it, the internet. You break exclusivity. With video That's stuff. just what it is. But okay. So my thing was, I wanted to write stories. I still want them to be read. Yeah. Not all of them are gems. And that's fine. That's you the always nature. have a, your favorite child. <laughs> One, you know, we can't all be astronauts, right? Right, okay, sure, 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 um, sure, sure, sure. But I'm submitting. And then if I get several rejections on one piece, uh -huh. then I just take it out of rotation. And it's officially, not dead, but it's, it's like, okay, this isn't going to be published anywhere. Cool. Put that in a pile, set it aside. Uh -huh. That can be set out for people to read. And okay. then that can also be part of the podcast that I want to do. Oh, yeah. I forgot to tell y'all. We can talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just feel like, you know, there's still a lot of people that enjoy reading. Yes. Um, but at the same time, podcasts are very popular. And it's the same thing with YouTube. Like any way that you can get, that you can digest a story. Yes. Because people just enjoy stories, and that's why you know Radio Lab and um, Snap Judgment and yeah, all the all those other podcasts are very popular because you just like hearing the voice, you like engaging in the story, and it's like story time. It's it's great. And the beautiful thing about podcasts, which I think again was why I was interested in doing this sort of longer form talking content on the channel, mm -hmm. is that it can be easily translated to. Um, like a podcast platform. Like the thing about podcasts that makes them great is that you can listen to them while you're doing other things. Mm -hmm. And so they're just, I think they're a lot more available than traditional, well, not even traditional, but just like than YouTube content, for example. So I, th yeah, I think the video, uh, not video podcast, but I think you having a podcast for your writing could be really cool and fun. And again, it's not going to be for everybody. Some of the stories aren't going to be that great. Yeah. But I think a good number of them are pretty good. What did you call it? We, we had already figured out a name for your podcast. Oh, well, that's the name of the podcast and the name of the website. Ah, he's so, got a website, y'all. Wait, it's you not, do? It's not published. Oh, hopefully by the time this goes live, it'll be published. There's not going to be a whole lot on there, but it's <gasps> how does this end? 
Yeah, it's called How Does This End? Well, so it's going to be mostly like a newsletter. So if you want... Yes. It's just going to be a form and a space for me to exist on the internet. Yes. If you want to hear more about the stories, find out where they are, if they do get published, or if they are on the podcast or when the podcast is going live, then you can... Join the mailing list. Join the mailing list. Yeah, it'll be in the show notes. And then if there's a Patreon, we'll let you know as well. If there's a Patreon, (laughs) we'll let you know about that too. Yeah. I think the mailing list is actually probably the best way to go now that I... Now that you mentioned that other stuff, I think doing the podcast is also just an interesting way to like flex the creativity in a different way. Cause mm. then it's like, so I've already said like, Ooh, if you do the podcast, can it be a stumble well production? Cause I already think like, Oh man, it'd be cool to bring in like voice actors. Yeah, and the answer is yes, but we're the budget will be right, right. tight. Razor, razor thin. I know. But just saying like, Ooh, if we could bring in like voice actors to read it and then you could have like sound design. It's like crash bang. Whoa. Like all that kind of, no, yeah, fun. And I can do voices. I can do voices, y'all. He can do voices, y'all. I mean, I mostly just have what my voice is. Like, I don't really have... Yeah, but people genuinely enjoy the sound of your voice. Yeah, I'm like an H. John Benjamin type. Like, I can be multiple characters, but they all going to sound the same, you know? (laughs) I mean... I can do some Southern drawl. He's got some range. Do some drawl You can too. Yeah, I can have fun with it. Anyway. Now I have to get this thing going. (laughs) Yeah, see, that's the way, that's good. You talk about it publicly mm. and edit it into the thing, so then you have to follow through. That's you why I'm always like, cut it out. That's why I tell people things, because it makes me follow through. All that to be said. Tricking yourself. Stick around. Those of you that want to read, thank you. Yeah. Um, like I said, if we do, if and by we, I mean him, if, he, if you launch... <laughs> Your mailing list uh, thing, we will add it to the show notes, or if you're watching us here on YouTube, add it to the description box where you can go and check it out and join. He mostly, you mostly write stories that are uh, like science fiction y. um, I don't even think. Like Black Mirror y. Yeah. Little twists and turns, dork. I feel like most fiction has to have that. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying. Just to get people engaged. But yeah, It's it's not. It's not horror. No, it's not horror, but it's very like. One is like borderline, but. Where it's like, ooh, I want to, I'm going to think about that now because you've put me in a position to like think about that. Mm. You know what I mean? For those of you who would say that I'm leeching off of my wife's success Who's and the saying platform. That? I'm Whoa, just saying. Hold up now. I'm, I'm Everybody just, sit down. I'm putting it out there. Why? Don't get, go negative. Get you a strong woman. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and support them. Help support them. Are you doing laundry? Like the things that we're talking about. Are you helping to do X, Y, and Z while she's out there making money? This isn't a quip pro quo. This what, isn't, for right now? Yeah, this isn't a quip pro quo. But I'm trying to make sure that there's value, not just professionally, but personally, where Be- I'm here for you. Yeah. And then, you know, dinner is made and I'm doing more. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, so I mean, like, I'm making sure that things are done. <laughs> The academic sabbatical is that. It is an academic sabbatical. I am not expecting something in return. But there is, there's an availability now. Yeah, I'm just saying that the fact that you've been able to, like, I, like the fact that you were a financial resource of stability while I was starting Stumble Well, I'm just reciprocating. Right. That's all I'm doing. But I'm, so there's... Because I can now. There's an availability now... Join the Patreon. Literally in terms of... <laughs> <laughs> there's an availability emotionally and there's an availability um, mentally. So when you want to talk about things, want to spitball, yes, I'm there for you. That's part of my role. Which has been very helpful as well. With the company, that's part of my role as a partner. But when I was working, I was so drained and exhausted um, that I didn't make time. I was very selfish with my time because it was precious i only had but so much before i had to go back and yeah you know face the world that's that's a big part of this too and part of that is me helping out a little bit more part of that is like oh that needs to be done you have a deadline you have x y and z my schedule's a little bit more fluid so let me help out with some things yeah but like that's that's what it is because i know inevitably people are going to be like oh well yeah of course any man would just sit on his butt I would, I didn't even go, that doesn't even cross my mind, but I guess that's a thing. I'm just, bro- I'm just broaching the subject because oh, okay. yeah, it's like, oh, he's just another man that's like letting the woman do the work Oh. while he's playing video games all day. I get, okay. I have not played video games in a minute. I just, well, I think, 
I guess the reason for me why this that that scenario didn't cross my mind is because like we've been together long enough where even when like you just know that I'm not gonna let you do that you know (laughs) well at the beginning of the relationship we mentioned this in a previous podcast it's like hey so if I see that you're not doing anything I'm out right if I see that you're not growing or trying to make something of yourself I'm out yeah and and that for me it was never tied to money I was like I just need to see that you're trying you're doing something it's not really about if you're making a lot of money or something like that. I just need to see that you're passionate about something. Right. That's what's important to me. So, like I said at the top, it was like it's been so cool to see the growth you've made in such a short amount of time. Because it's like, oh, neat. I wish I could have been able to help you facilitate this, you know, X amount of years ago. But you know, here we are. We are. It takes a while to build something. So mm. that's just what it is. All that being said. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for joining us here on this podcast. Sorry we've been out for a minute. Life. Good Life. things. Good things. Oh, maybe in the next podcast. Let us know if you're watching us on YouTube, I guess, in the comments. Let us know if you would like us to talk about like how we're figuring out, adjusting to like working with each other. Ooh. Yeah, I think that could be maybe a good follow-up topic. I don't know what we're going to say because we're still figuring it out. There's a lot of close, just a little preview, a little preview, a little taste. There's a lot of closed doors. <laughs> There's a lot of noise-canceling headphones. That's a good way to put that. There's a lot of partitions, a lot of blankets that are being held up. That's you cross cool. this line after 6 p.m. type of thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you're interested in hearing us talk about just like balancing working with slash for each other and still being in a romantic relationship as well, let us know in the comments and we can have a follow up episode and try to give like some tangible things on that one. Rather, whereas I think this one was more just like, we have news. Here you go. <laughs> Welcome back. You know? We've been meaning to put this episode out. Yeah, for, for a, while. a while. Sorry. What's our thing? Oh, stumble well, stumble on. We'll see you, we'll next, see you next time. time. Bye. Bye.